Today on Painting Our Monsters, we're going to be looking at this creature coming out of the sea. I had a dear friend of mine ask me about uh, drawing some creature that had washed up on a beach uh, down on the coast, and so that's what I'm trying to do here. And So I'm just starting off with a dark shape. You can see I already spent a lot of time on the sky in the background and the water trying to get that just right. If anyone wants to see an underpainting of what this looked like before I got started, do let me know in the comments. But now that we have the general lay of the land, I'm just kind of putting in a bit of this monster's shape. And I'm thinking this is some sort of a crustacean. So we can see we can see spikes. It's got ridges. Now to make it look like it's uh, washed up, I'm just going to take some risks here. And I'm just going to try to give it a little arm. See if I can maybe give it a little hand. I don't know if this is going to work out. And part of painting is learning how to use the paints and figuring out how they all kind of go together. So sometimes you got to take risks. I think the shape of this is is looking okay. He's kind of got his head down in the water, but I also kind of think he's looking like a like a two-legged fella. And I'm really thinking more of a kind of a crustacean vibe is what we're going for. But let's see if we can give him a little face. So we're putting in a little dark outline down there. Maybe we can give him an eye. Some sort of bloated eye. It's filled up with microbes. Maybe he's not doing too good these days. I'm going to try to bring in an eyebrow and give it some definition, but I'm just not happy with how that turned out. And when that happens, it's okay to just scrape off that paint and try again. Uh, you can also let it dry and go over the top of it, but I think as a as an artist, you always got to follow what's in your heart. So if it's not working for you, you just got to try again. And I think this this crustacean guy, maybe he's looking a little too... A little too much like a two-legged fella. So let's see what else we can put in there. Let's try if a little bit of white. Does that give him a... Make it look like he has some eyes? Sometimes you can just try something and then come back later and see. Does it work? I don't know. If, if something's not working for you, a lot of times what I'll do is move on to another part of the painting. So now I'm thinking, you know what? This The scale of this guy's not right. So let's come on and let's put in some, some bigger spikes. Kind of change the shape of them. Now he looks, instead of like an egg with a couple of prickles, now it's something more like, maybe it's like a centipede. He's like a long, spiny ridge sort of creature. But then let's let's come down in here and, and work these waves, right? The water coming in um, has an angle. We can see where it's coming in from, this, from, from out there, so we want it to kind of give us the effect that we're on this bend in the beach, right? So now you can see I'm trying to get a different effect. I'm using the back of my brush. There's a little bit of paint on there, but also what's going on is I'm just scratching through the paint. And that's given us a transparent effect. Maybe down below this, this fella is already starting to shed his exoskeleton and so we can kind of see through it. Maybe he's got a translucent ability. Who's to say? But we're just using the back of the brush and kind of experimenting there. Now here we're coming in again and I gave him a little bit of a more of a longer head hiding there in the woods, right? And I'm I'm starting to like what I'm seeing a little bit more. Coming in and if he's going to pull himself out of the water, he's going to need some creep, some, some legs, some appendages. So let's see if we can give him some segmented bits, right? So I'm thinking about these legs as things coming in three parts, right? Comes out from the body, then there's got to bend, and then up, up away. Now, I don't think he's big enough, so we're just going to add some shadow in the water. That's what that's supposed to represent, is there's a creep, there's something hiding down below there. Doesn't look quite right, though, just that blue blob, so let's get, let's have some fun. Let's give him more of a tail coming up here. And let's give him some, maybe he's a he's a real long centipede. He's like a centipede and a lobster together. And he's crawling up out of the sea and he's creating all sorts of splashes as he does. He's got this body just covered in these, these spikes and they're able to have some sort of control over energy. Some of them are translucent. Some of them, maybe some of them radiate power. He could boil this whole golf if he wanted to. But this painting's not going to work if we don't take into account his place in the landscape. So that means we got to put in some, some, just a little bit of blue and white splashing back and forth to give us an idea that this creature's affecting this water, right? He, it, we, we're not painting, painting our monsters is about, it's not so much about the monsters as it is the monsters and where we've seen them. So we got to put in all these water ridges to show, yeah, when the water comes in, it splashes against him. Maybe he came out of the sea that away and there's still some wakes behind him. And he's all right for now, so we're going to kind of move into our foreground. And because we're not going to cover him at all in this painting, we can come back to him later if we need to. But first, I'm just laying in some bushes, and then we got a hill across the top here putting in some grass. And that's 
that's going to push him way farther back and make it look like we're standing up high looking down on a beach way down below. Now, this is one of my favorite things to do. I, I, we see these chain link fences everywhere we go. You know what I'm talking about. It's a metal pole with a just metal chain link between it. So I'm just starting with the poles, then coming across the top. Sometimes they got another pole across the top. Just putting a little bit of darkness, a little bit of 3D on there. And then we're just putting in a little indication here. This is this is a challenge here because what you got to do is just touch each spot one time. If you go back, you're going to make it too thick. And it's if it's too thin, it's okay. We want it to be transparent. We see these, these fences all the time in our lives. They're by train tracks. They're around schools, around your yard maybe. So let's just we put that one in there. And now what happens? Well, things grow around them, you know. So we got some vines growing up. We got some flowers. Maybe we, someone left an old plastic bag out here. Maybe there's an old beer bottle hidden back there. You know, maybe people come and like to look at this lagoon, but there's nobody here right now because of this, this creature. And now seeing him, I'm thinking line is so important to art. So I'm coming back and trying to give him more line on that tail. Something to make his shape distinct. And what I like about the shape of this creature is I like these spikes and spines and barbs he has. I just imagine they got all sorts of different kinds of powers. And uh, we, we got to be careful about that. So I'm trying to come back in here and do something similar. Okay. Now, am I in danger of overworking this part of the panel? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm always in danger of overworking. Um, and that's something I'm working on. But, you know, we kind of got what we're going for here. And, and now it's kind of time to come in with these legs. So I just have some, some dark purple and black. And now I'm just hitting the top with some really, really light purple. This is just purple and white mixed together. And then when I kind of blend those out a little bit, it kind of gives us the shape of, oh, maybe that's a leg. Maybe that's like a crab leg crawling out of there, right? That's what's dragging him along. And then over here, same deal. This is this other leg. Now, this is on the far side of him, and it's going behind the woods. So we're, we're trying to put him in into the place, right? Here's another leg that's that's tucked behind the other side of his body. So that kind of gives us some sense of of what's going on, right? Trying to give a few more in there. I imagine this 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 fella's got quite a few legs. So we're coming in there with as much as we can now. I'm still not happy with the head, so I came in here and tried to add a little bit more. Trying to find just where the eye's gonna go. And now with eyes, it's important to understand how reflection works. And when we're looking at eyes and making them look realistic, you want to see these little glints of light. So what I did here is I was I was imagining an insect eye having a whole bunch of little glints of light. And I just put a whole bunch in there. And I think it worked out really well. So when you're doing monsters, you can take these risks and, and put in put in a shape for an eye and then just try to put in some different lights. So this is great, especially looking at uh, different kinds of anime can be really good for this. Seeing where they put the different little blobs of light in their eye. But I'm, I'm kind of happy with his face. And so I'm, I'm going to go back and put in some more legs, make him kind of reaching through we need that dark to kind of give it shape and then the light to make it pop okay so now he's just reaching up he's crawling out of the sea he, he was going to be washed up on shore but no he's doing the washing he's coming ashore himself and here he is to see see what there is and that light and dark play just gives us a, a little bit of an effect of 3d like the effect that you know has a, a top and a bottom and it's a rounded thing he maybe needs another one back there behind him so we can see where he's, how he works and how he's all put together. And with these highlights, I'm just trying to keep each little segment of the leg distinct. It's probably a bad habit to use my finger, but I do it just about every time. And then here, I'm putting in some teeth and I'm just being careful to hide them behind that tree. If I want to, I could come in and let it dry and put in a little bit more green on top, but... I was able. I was. I was lucky enough. Had a steady enough hand to be able to get all those teeth in there. And I think we're about done. I think that's gonna about do it. I'm pretty happy with how this night scene turned out. It's dark and dim. Um, my first night scene, so it was a challenge, but I think it worked out. That creature definitely looks like the kind of guy you don't want to stick around and take a photo of, right? But he's our monster. Uh, thank you for joining me, and remember, our world is what we make it.